Hey, what's up Reefers? I have a story for you today. It's on how I got the wrong fish. So a couple weeks ago, I swung by Fantastic in Frederick. It is one of my favorite local fish stores. I have a lot of favorites. I live in a fantastic area for fish and coral. As I was browsing, I saw something out of the corner of my eyes that I've been looking for for a very long time. Alright guys, we have Fantastic. Was not planning on filming today. Because I was going to check it out, but... Sawfish that I've been wanting for a long, long time. Hello. Hi. I'm back. <laughs> All right. Oh no, it's fogging up. It's yellow, it's skinny, it looks like a banana. It's a yellow chorus wrasse. You may think that yellow chorus wrasse seems really common. What's so special? All the ones I've seen are kind of chunky. And I know yellow chorus wrasse is a pretty common fish, but to me, it's beautiful. I've been a huge fan of yellow chorus wrasse ever since I saw one in CJ's aquarium. They just seem so active going in and out of rock work, swimming around, and then it brings a nice splash of color to your tank. And at the same time, they provide a surface, which I feel like I may need in my tank. In the back of my mind, I'll always thought that maybe my tank has some sort of pest even though I've never actually seen any of them even coming up at night trapped with a red light. But it's always better to be safe than sorry, right? So I have been on the lookout for a yellow chorus wrasse locally for a long, long time. So back to Fantastic. Out of the corner of my eyes, I saw a little yellow flash. I turned to look and sure enough, there is a small yellow chorus wrasse. So without missing a beat, I found an employee that was working that day and I went like, Hey man, I would like that yellow chorus wrasse that's over there in that tank. Can you bag it up for me? Oh, uh, dove into the sand? Yeah. Oh man. But in the same tank, they have like this beautiful Da, da Vinci clouds. It's better than the pair I got in the tank. Oh yeah, just go for it. Yeah. And I was really quick with it because one time I remember trying to pick up a purple long tentacle anemone. I thought I'd just pick it up on the way out and sure enough it was gone after like 10 minutes. So these days when I see something I want, I make sure to tell them I want to pick it up first. So again back to my story, I w so I went up to employee, asked him to pick up that yellow chorus rest, he backed it up for me, I was super happy. And here's where the story begins. After I go home, I know that with a rest, I need a better top. Now I did have a really slap together top. Well, I take that back. The top was actually decent, except it was for a different configuration. Back then my light had, had a mount, so I cut a section out of the uh, frame of the top because it wedged into the light and the light mounts is gonna hold the top up, keeping its structural integrity. But now that I have changed my light from a mount to a hanging, there's a gap in the top, so the whole top just kind of collapsed onto each other. So check this out, the instant ocean swing arm hydrometer pulling a double duty to hold apart the little gap so that this lid can somewhat fit over this tank. Who says hydro hydrometer has no use, eh? For the longest time, my aquarium does not have a top and it was okay because all my fish have been living there for so long, they have their own bolt holes, so when they get scared, they go into the rock work and stuff going straight up. But now that we have a jumper, a rocks, I need a top. So I pulled out my old top from the dungeon, I put it back on, the whole thing just sat, it just looks really sad. That is when I remembered Six months ago at Reef Palooza in New Jersey, I picked up a DIY top kit from the fine folks of Ecotech slash AI. They got their new brand and uh, anyways, I'm not sure of the details except that I do have this kit sitting in the basement as well. It has been sitting in the basement for six months because I hate DIY. I'm procrastinating. Just look at my stand bill. It took me half a year to get to today's point, but we need the top. So I pulled out the power tool that I used exactly one time and I slapped the whole thing together in an hour. All right guys, here it is, the finished D and D mesh top. So after exactly one hour, the mesh top is done. It looks nice, I'm proud. I took a video, posted it on Instagram. I pat myself on the back. And that's when people dropped the bomb on me. Turns out I did not pick up a yellow chorus wrasse. Instead, I got a silver belly brass. 
Ah, 10 plus years in a hobby, huh? But it's not all bad. Basically, the silver belly ras gets a little bit larger than the yellow chorus ras, and for the most part, are pretty much similar. And to be honest, I do like the coloration of the silver belly ras a little better because it got a little silver belly, so it's a little bit more color variation compared to a solid yellow chorus ras. But this story does have a happy ending. So the yellow chorus ras, <laughs> so the silver belly ras, has been in the tank for about five weeks now. It has adjusted really well. Hey, what's up, Reefers? So the Silver Belly Ras has been in the 45-gallon tank for close to five weeks now. And as you can see, he is totally making himself at home. It's always front and center, picking a rock work and waiting for food. But before we talk about this little guy, let me show you a little bit more about this mash top first. So as I mentioned earlier in the video, I purchased this mash top uh, from D&D at Reaperpalooza in New Jersey and I've been holding on to it for half a year before I put it together. I really like this mash top because it's really slim and low profile as you can see here. I'll lift it a little bit. So this whole thing kind of sit inside the rim of the tank so that it doesn't stick out. The version I had before this was from BLS. It's also a DIY kit except it sits on top on, of the tank so it's not as clean but it's still, it's still a good top. Uh, in terms of mesh size, I believe there's only one size for the DND one, and this is the finer version, which is good because, like with BLS, I, there's two versions. I used the larger one, and I have fish actually jump through the mesh, like they came straight up and then landed on top of the mesh, unable to get back in. It was bad. Uh, but anyways, really happy with the mesh top. One little modification that I did that they recommended was actually cut up the plastic piece right here in the corner in order to let some of the uh, cabling through, which is what I've done here. And I had to cut the mesh a little bit to uh, allow for my uh, return pipe to go to go above the mesh. This is a strange design. I would have just cut the weir, but um, the previous owner did not do that and I just kind of left it. All right, so let's go ahead and remove the mesh top and we'll talk a little bit more about, ah, I got it wet. <laughs> I hope it doesn't rust. <laughs> I don't think it will. All right, I'll wipe it later. So let's talk a little bit about the silver belly rest. Oh, where did you go? We're about to talk about you. Let me see. That probably scared him. Oh, he's in the back. All right, so basically for the first week or so, he, he was really shy. I think he hid in the sand pretty often. So I, I hardly see him. And then I went on vacation, right? For about a week and I came back. And that's when I found him like out, always swimming in the open. Um, so it took him just about a week, a week to really settle in. It was uh, really similar to the pair of foul fish, which where are they? Oh, there they are. Man, they're all hiding. I think like the mesh dropping in really freaked them out. Uh, so it also took the foul fish about a week to really get comfortable and start swimming all over the place. So let's, let's feed them a little bit to see if we can kind of lure them out. And here's my collection of food. I'm trying to do it one-handed. Sorry. Oh, oh this is tough, man. But in terms of flake food, I mentioned this many, many times. I really like the uh, Ocean Nutrition Prime Reef Flakes, and I'm not being sponsored on them or anything like that. I just really like them. And a lot of um, reefers that I really trust, they also feed this Prime Reef. But let's go ahead and crush it up a little bit, release in the water column. Oh, look at the file fish. Look at them feeding aggressively. And the bicolor bloody. Look at this guy, a little, little chubby guy. Dude. Where's the Silver Valley Raz? What's going on? Hey man, you're the star of the show. Why are you hiding in the back? Yeah, I think the mash top falling in the water really freaked it out. Usually he is front and center, right smack in the middle, uh, competing with the rest of the fish for food. I don't think, I don't think any of the food actually made it to him. That's why it's kind of like this. Oh, it's coming back out. Look at that, it's coming back out. It's coming back out. It's coming back out. Oh, it's coming back out. It's coming, all right. His back, his back. He, he knew he missed out. <laughs> okay, I guess we gotta feed again. Uh, I gotta switch hand here and use my right hand. So when I feed my flake, I like to dip my hand in there a little, in the water so I can really crush it up and make sure it's not on the surface because it may just get blown to the back. All right, buddy. So this is how he is normally, basically uh, front and center, chasing after food, every little piece. It's really interesting. Um, it's almost like he can move the, his head independently. You see him looking left and right and then go for it. It's, it's really hard to describe. It's almost unnatural looking in a way, but um, beautiful little fish, beautiful little fish. And he always has a little belly. So I think he is uh, eating really well in this tank and I just see him all the time just picking at the rocks. 
what uh, probably copepods or like amphipods as it's picking off. But he never gets into any quarrel out of fish. Look at that, even like that. Even the, this jerk, Bicolor Blenny. No issue of any fish at all. Um, they're just side by side grabbing foods, you know. And hopefully, if there's even pests in this tank, uh, he'll make short work of them. Both uh, the silver belly rats as well as the foul fish, they both pick up pests. Uh, so I'm really happy with this guy, really healthy. I do know that they'll get to about 5 inches if I remember right. Um, but by then, the 150 should be up and running, so we should be uh, in a good position. Oh, look at that. This uh, grande is actually picked up a piece of flick. You see that? Right smack in the middle? That's funny. For now, the mesh top stays on top of the tank, even though the fish has adjusted to the tank. But knowing that it is a ras, most likely I'll just keep the top on for long term. So reefers. That is the story on how I bought the wrong fish. So have you ever bought the wrong fish? If you have, leave a comment below. And if you like this video, leave a like. And I'll see you next Sunday. Oh, <laughs> no hesitation, huh?